Whew. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, it's been a day. Uh, but we'll, we'll push on. All right. So just a quick check on what's due. So, okay, so we're not, yeah, we're past that. Okay. Sorry, I've got to readjust my brain from 14-week mode to 16-week mode. Um, okay, so, all right. So your conversions test was due yesterday. <clears throat> um, I'll get, try to get, that, get those grades finalized tomorrow in that I've, I've really just got to go check the work entries and just make sure everything's, you know, P's and Q's and whatnot. But um, any, any trouble with any of those questions? Hopefully some of them look somewhat familiar-ish, hopefully. I try to put on the test what we talk about in class, you know. Um, okay, so percent lab one. That's where we should be, correct? All right, good deal. Okie dokie. Ooh, let me scooch this out of the way. All right. Um, since we are in the percent lab, uh, we're going to be doing some formulas. So does anybody else, apart from the folks that already grabbed one, does anybody else need a calculator? Jackie? All right. Jackie will get you number six. Go ahead and that to Jackie. And I'll, I'll grab you one. I apologize if I didn't spell that right. Not my strong suit. And Emma, there's number five. All right. All right, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and pull up in Moodle the 143% notes. Now, I don't know if I've got it to where it downloads it or not. I know I didn't have the Andrews class fixed, but let's just see if it downloads it or if it does anything for that matter. Come on, Internet. There we are. Okay. Whew. What a day. All right. Put this on Zoom. Okie dokie. So, if you're looking in the book, <clears throat> it, we're primarily in section 3A. That's where a lot of this stuff came from. And we're also in chapters 19 through 22 of that little black and blue big fat math notebook. Um, I took some formulas out of there too because they're a little bit simpler. But things that we'll be looking at, applying percentages, selling price and sales tax, uh, which, you know, selling price sometimes is called different things than selling price. Sometimes it's called list price or sale price or, you know, we'll, but uh, there's a couple of terms that mean the same thing, but we'll get everybody straightened out. <clears throat> Discount sale price. That's when this, the uh, listed price has been marked down. Original price and original cost. Um, two different things, but they basically use the same formula. Price is, you know, the original price that you're selling it for if you're running a store. Original cost being what you paid for it, then to sell it. All right. Ratios, rates, and unit rate, which we've, we talked about unit rate in the conversions lab, right? And markup, I doubt we'll get to today. Um, just because it's kind of uh, it's a it's a big formula, and we got other stuff that we have to cover first. So, okay, percentages as fr applying percentages, using them as fractions. Okay, so uh, you know that you can turn a percent to a fraction just by taking the percent number and putting it over 100, right? So three percent, three out of 100. 25 percent, 25 out of 100. If it can simplify, simplify it down. So that one goes down to one fourth. Fractions as percents, okay, so going the other way, uh, you take the number and you, you take the, the existing fraction and you change it however you need to to get it into something over 100 or a multiple of 100. So if it's 11 over 100, that's easy. That's 11%. They like to sometimes throw that in as a trick question to see if you know what percent really means. And percent means, of course, out of 100 or per 100. One-fifth you would need to expand that out to make it 20 over 100 
and then get 20%. All right. <clears throat> now, this is kind of the long drawn out way to do this. The, uh, the easiest way to do this is to take one, divide it by five, get your decimal, then multiply that by 100 and you're done. I figured out homework grades like that for years. Okay, okay. percents as decimals. All right, of course, fractions, decimals, and percents, they're all related, right? They're all interchangeable. So if you've got something like 65%, you're gonna take the percent number, make it a fraction out of 100, even if it's something bigger than 100. Okay, well, that turns into like a mixed number. Um, but if it's 65%, that's 65 over 100, which becomes 0.65 because you would divide it. All right. So there's a quick rehash of how to move with fractions and decimals. <clears throat> so when we get to word problems, what you want to do is you want to start looking for key words. All right. Most of you probably know that of indicates multiplication, right? Uh, what's not on here, which is, you know, it, it can kind of go either or at times, but the word per, P-E-R, uh, for most of our purposes in the conversions lab, that meant divide, right? Miles per hour, miles over hours, kilometer per second, you know, and so on. So if you see per, that usually means divide. But in this case, we're also gonna have something called what or what number or find, stuff like that. So that means that there's a piece missing that we've got to figure out. And that's what we get uh, our variable from. Okay, so that leads us into this next part, which hopefully for some of you is a review, the percent proportion. A really handy tool that helps you find missing pieces of percents. Okay, and what it does is it breaks it down into three parts, or, or three sections, I should say. I don't want to confuse people. So, <clears throat> first, you've got the part, all right? It's also sometimes called an amount, depending on what book you're using or what website you're looking at. Uh, but either way, it gets the variable of A, all right? Next, you've got the whole, which is also sometimes called the base, all right? And that gets the letter or variable of B. A amount, B base. Uh, or, you know, part, part to whole, amount to base, things like that. And both of those get set equal to the percent. And of course, percent gets the variable of P. We didn't want to put that on part because that would cause rampant confusion, justifiably so. All right, so the basic um, formula that we use for the percent proportion is right here, okay? A over B equals P over 100. Amount to base equals percent over 100. Uh, when I taught it to eighth graders, we used this one, okay? Is over of equals P over 100, because what that one does is it helps you find the pieces in the text that you need to assign variables to. And we'll see, we'll look at some examples coming up right here. All right, <clears throat> so make sure that you've got that copied down. A over B equals P over 100. And every time that you do a percent proportion, write that down, all right? Best way to remember it is to write it down every time. All right, so let's go to our first example. So with these types of problems, there are gonna be three different instances where one thing is gonna be missing. It might be the part, it might be the whole, it might be the percent. So this first one, what if the part or is missing? Now, this one, when the part is missing, is the only one that, that they'll write two different ways. Most of the time, they'll say something like, what is 75% of 45? They might also say, find 75, oops, 75% of 45. 
But that's the only way that they'll switch it up on you. All the rest of them will be pretty much straightforward. Okay, so the best way to find all your pieces of this is to block it out, all right? So what is 75% of 45? All right, so the first part, what is, all right, that's A, right? Then our second part, <clears throat> uh, 75%, I think we did that one in green. So 75% is our second part, that's P, right? And then the third part of 45, that's B. Okay, so what is 75% of 45? The what is, that's what's missing, that's your part. 75% is obviously your percent, and then of 45, that means the base. So what we do then is we're gonna substitute this stuff in here, okay? So what is, we don't know it, so that is going to stay as A, right? That will stay as A. Of 45, so 45 will go down here in place of B, right, in the formula. And then 75%, so 75 will go there. Now, since it says 75%, you don't need to change it to a decimal, okay? Please don't do that. If it's 75%, its fraction equivalent is 75 over 100. So you don't have to change the 75 at all. You just stick it over the 100, okay? Make sense? All right, so now <clears throat> we've got everything uh, entered in here. So now you cross multiply and then divide, and then you'll figure it out. So 75 times 45 gets you 3375 right here. 100 times A will get you 100A right there. So there's your cross multiplying part. And then you divide by the term that has the variable. Sometimes it'll be 100A, sometimes it'll be something else with B or something else uh, with P, all right? So just make sure you divide by the one that has the variable because that's what we're trying to find. So when you divide by 100, that goes away. And then you got 3375 divided by 100 which will give you 33.75 for your amount, or part, or is, okay? So the hardest part about any proportion, the percent proportion included, is setting it up. That's always the hardest part about each proportion. But if you can set it up correctly, everything else literally falls into place. Kind of like uh, cooking, I guess. Some recipes, the, the ingredients have an order that you put them in, right? Because if you don't, sometimes some of them have a chemical reaction and it, you know, just makes a mush. So, any questions about what you do when the part is missing? Okay. Again, if I'm going too fast for you to write it down, just snap a picture of it with your phone. You can add it in later. Um, along those lines. For your work for me, or for your notes for Miss Wilson, if you have 043, don't take a picture of what she or I wrote and upload it back to us. That's not what you're supposed to do. That you're supposed to upload your own handwritten stuff for either my work entry or her participation evidence, right? So we'll make sure that we knew that. All right, let's go to if the base is missing. All right, <clears throat> so question says four is 40% of what number? Okay, part, whole, percent. So four is, that's our part, right? That's our A. And then 40%, that's our percent. And then of what number? We don't know that. So B is missing, right? Which we kind of buried delete on that one anyway, but now you see what it looks like. Okay, so substitute, all right? 
4 is, remember the is over of equals p over 100 version of this, 4 will go in for a, all right? Of what number? We don't know that number, so that stays a variable of b, right? And then the percent, 40, will go in place of the p, and remember don't change its form, just put it as 40 over 100. All right, so once you got everything sorted there, do your steps. Cross multiply divide, so you get 40b equals 400, divide by 40, b equals 10. So again, the only tricky part about it is just getting it set up. Once you got it set up, everything else just goes where it's supposed to go. Any questions about that one? Anybody still copying that one down or need to grab a picture of it? Everybody good? I didn't hear any no's. Okie dokie. <clears throat> this is being recorded if you need to go back and watch it later. All right. So if the percent is missing, same rules apply. Just this time we're going to have a different variable in a different spot. 13 is what percent of 25? Okay. 13 is. So that's A. What percent? What percent indeed? We don't know it. Of 25. So that's our B. All right. So we throw it in the percent proportion. 13 is. So 13 will go in place of A. What percent? We don't know. So that's going to stay as P. And then of 25. So 25 will go below the 13. All right. So 13 over 25 equals P over 100. So then you cross multiply, you get 25P equals 1300. Then you divide it and it's 52. Or if you need to, 52%. Um, I can't remember if the answer choices have the percent signs on them or not. Um, I mean, if you can get to 52, you're good. You got it. Okay, so any questions <clears throat> about using the percent proportion to find the part, the whole, or the percent? Or the amount and the base and the percent? Whichever one you like. Everybody pretty much okay on that one? You divide by whichever one has the variable. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Anybody else? Okay. Bad news about this. This is the easiest part about this lesson. Sorry. Um, sec uh, percent section is probably one of the hardest ones in the class. So we're just getting it out of the way now. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so let's move on to some of our formulas. All right, let's talk about sales tax. So sales tax is, of course, tax added to your total purchases, whether it's a federal sales tax or a state sales tax or whichever. Um, but basically, it's how the government, it's another way for the government to get their share off of you, right, or off of the stores. So here's a scenario here. Let's say that you buy a $40 sweater at a 8% state sales tax. What is your tax amount? Now, most of the time, the questions are not going to ask you what is the tax amount. It's going to ask you how much you're going to pay at the checkout counter. But here's how you figure out your tax amount. There's two ways to go about it. One is pretty straightforward. Another one is uh, using the percent proportion, kind of and takes a little bit longer. But either way, what you do, you convert the 8% into either a decimal, like a decimal here, or a fraction here. Now, if you go decimal, you just do 40 times 0.08 and you get $3.20 in tax. You're done, easy. 
But if you want to go the fraction or percent route, it's x over 40 equals 8 over 100. <clears throat> and then it just kind of chips on down, chips on down, and you get 320 that way. But this will work uh, faster for these purposes. Okay. Now, again, that is not how much you pay for the sweater. That is how much additional that you pay for the sweater. Okay, so most of the time you'll be asked for the total included with the tax, so you just add it to your total purchase. So $3.20 in tax is uh, added to 40 to get you the 43.20. Now another short way to do that is if you had done 40 times uh, 1.08. Because multiplying by 1.08 goes ahead and adds it back into it in a very weird and convoluted way that we're going to see here in just a minute. Um, but that will also give you the same thing. All right. So let's let's look at why. <clears throat> okay. So one of the first things that you're going to see a lot of, especially on the uh, uh, second, I think it's the second percent lab, is finding the original prices of things. Okay, so here's the setup for you. You paid $53.99 for new headphones, 8% tax included. What was the original price before tax? Okay, now these, unfortunately with these things, what makes them so difficult is on the surface, they look like it's a pretty easy solution. Right? Most people think, oh, I'll just work backwards and I'll be fine. Like, eh, yes and no. It's a little bit more complicated than that, unfortunately. So here's how you tackle it, all right? <clears throat> so add the percent of the cost of the headphones to the percent of tax for the total cost percent. So let me explain that a little bit more clearly. Think of it like this. You're going to go to the store, you're going to buy a new set of headphones, right? They say, a, they say a certain price on the shelf, right? Let's say that they said they were $20, okay? You're going to pay 100% of that $20, right? There was no discount sign, or there was no Black Friday sale, anything like that. You're going to pay 100% of that $20 price, right? Otherwise, they will tackle you to the ground when you leave the store. Now, in addition to that $20, 100% of that $20, you're also going to be adding on an 8% sales tax, right? So in other words, you are paying 108% of the price of those headphones, okay? That's where that 1.08 I was just talking about comes in. Multiplying it by 1.08 will take care of the adding it back part that you have to do. Okay? So <clears throat> what you do with that one point or that 108% is you make it a decimal and build your equation. So 108% becomes 1.08. Now we know that the 1.08 is multiplied by the original price to get how much you paid at the counter, right? So 53.99 was what you paid at the counter. $53.99 was what you paid at the counter. So you set that equal to 1.08 times X, which X in this case is the original price. Now, to figure out the original price, you just divide both sides by the 1.08, and then the original price pops out, $49.99, right? Now, that was very messy, right? That was really messy. Uh, that's because it was expanded. I had to show you where the 1.08 came from. I had to show you why it was 108% first and how you factored it in. You, the, what you're going to do for your problems is a much more concise formula. Okay? It's, I initially in my notes wrote alternate method, but what that should really say is preferred method. Okay? Because this will work out much better for you. All right. So the 
<clears throat> the formula goes, the total is equal to the cost plus the tax times the cost. All right. This works for finding original price and original cost, uh, whichever you're looking at. Uh, there are some slightly different formulas which we'll talk about later, but this one is very versatile. All right, so let's backpedal. Let's say that you didn't know that the original price was $49.99. All right, let's say you're going into it completely blind. So here's what you do. The total that you paid is going to go in right there where it says total, the $53.99. The original price or the original cost, you don't know it. So assign it a variable. Anything you don't know, give it a variable. Okay. So the original cost, we're going to call it C. Or you could call it P for price, whichever one you like. And then we're going to add 8% of C to it, right? Because you're going to have to pay the whole price, and then 8% of that price is getting added on. So what this becomes is $53.99 plus 1C, because how many C do you see sitting right there? So slap a one on there. We talked about during the conversions labs that sometimes one is used as a placeholder. This is one of them times because it's going to come back to help you here in about a minute. So convert the 8% C into 0.08 C. Convert it to a decimal. Now you're adding uh, two like terms. You're combining like terms, right? 1C plus 0.08 C gets you 1.08 C. Right there it is again. Keeps turning up like a bad penny. All right. So 1.08c gets set equal to the 53.99. You divide both sides by the 1.8. 49.99 fits back out again. All right. <clears throat> so there are several formulas coming up in the uh, coming up pages that are in the box. You want to make sure that you get those down. That's uh, they're important. Okay, so again, we had the total amount paid. We didn't know the original price, but we also knew the tax. So put in what you know, and then you just start doing your uh, operations and inverse operations at some point to figure it out. Any questions about this one? This works. This should work for finding original price and finding original cost. There is one in a minute coming up that is a little bit different, so we'll talk about it. But uh, I'll try to keep all these straight. Like I said, this is a this is a lessons a doozy. Right. Yeah, you're paying a hundred percent of the item. Yeah. Right. Yep. You got it. Good deal. Any other questions about this one before we go on? We got 20 minutes, so we'll get a little bit further than some of the other sections, just because we had to backtrack a little. Nothing that they did, it's just, you know, late starts and whatnot. <clears throat> okay, discounts and markups. Everybody knows what a discount is. If you've been shopping before, you know what a discount is. <laughs> right. So a discount, of course, is when the price is lowered. Sometimes a discount can also be called a markdown, depending on what problem that you're looking at. Sometimes a markdown is also a discount. And then a markup is a price that you need to sell to make a profit. So the way it works is like, let's say, is anybody in here working towards a, I don't know, like a small business degree so you can open up your own store? Right, okay, good. So you have to buy products to sell products, right? My father-in-law, he runs Pops Produce out on Airport Road uh, in Marble. And every Tuesday, he has to go out to Asheville to that huge, gigantic farmer's market that they have out there and load up. I mean, he can't sell anything unless he buys anything to sell, right? But see, when you go out there, you buy it at what they call at cost. And then he comes back, sets it up, and sells it at a markup. And if he doesn't mark it up, he makes no money off of what he bought. Exactly, yeah. So he has to mark it up. I think he said his baseline is that he marks um, things up like maybe like 200% or 250%, something like that, which basically is like, you know, two and a half times what it was that he paid for it, essentially. 
Um, <clears throat> but I mean, it's, it sounds bad, but it's really not. Yeah. So like when you, when you have these like Black Friday sales and stuff and they, or like they advertise on TV, it's like, get it at cost. It means that they're trying to get back the money that they spent on it because they want to get rid of it. Right. right. And two, along that same line, a lot of things are marked at discount sometimes because like, let's say you bought something that nobody wanted. Happens, right? Well, you mark it down to get rid of it, right? Or going out of business sale, 75% off. They don't want to load that crap up and take it somewhere. They want you to take it and get rid of it for them. Right? Like when Fred's closed down up at Andrews, they were selling the shelves. <laughs> they didn't want that stuff. I mean, I can't blame them. All right, so let's look at a couple more formulas here. Oops, hold on, let me clear that up. All right, so applications of discount. <clears throat> so, first example here. Let's say a new hat is $12.50 and it's 20% off. Find the new price. First of all, you can tell this is an old problem. New hats for Grown-ups, yeah, yeah. So let's say it's a hat for like a dog or a toddler, right? I mean, you know how it is if you have a toddler, you, you know, dress up and all kinds of stuff. Uh, I don't care. They don't even know what their feet are. All right, so find the new price. Well, <clears throat> it's twelve fifty because it's 20% off. Or no, no, sorry. I was thinking, I was thinking original price. I misspoke. It's twelve fifty, and we're going to a, apply a twenty percent discount. Sorry, it's a long day. It's been a long day. I mean, to show you how long of a day it's been, this is not the shirt that I had left the house in this morning. I went up to Andrews classroom I was in. Airs broke. Just went right through it. So, good disgusting image for everybody to feast on there for a minute. All right. So this is the discount price formula. New cost is equal to the old cost minus the percent of the old cost that's coming off. Okay? So, new minus old, or uh, sorry, new is equal to old minus the percent of old. I think I read that whole thing wrong. New cost is equal to the old cost minus the percent of the old cost. Ugh. Yeah, if, if these formulas were easy, everybody could do them, right? So here's what you do. You're going to substitute in here with what you know. First of all, you know new hat is $12.50 and it's going to be 20% off. Right there, since they're taking a discount off of it, this price, $12.50, becomes your old price. Okay? Because you're not going to pay that. 20% of it's coming off, right? Then we take the percent, the 20% off, and we're going to throw it in right there at the percent. So let me get my color in finished here. Okay. So the new price in this instance is what we're trying to find. Okay. Now the way that these formulas are built, you can use them in multiple instances. In this case, it's the new price that we're trying to find. There might be some other cases where they told you what the new price was. They told you how much was discounted and they wanted, they want you to find it before it was discounted, which is possible. Or in some cases, if they're really wanting to put you through the ringer, they want you to find a discount percent. It's doable. It's not as easy as some of these other ones. All right. So you fill in everything you know. So we're right here on this line right here. So new is equal to 1250 minus 20% 20 of 1250. Okay. So we got to do a little cleaning up here. All right. The first thing we're going to clean up is that we're going to take that percent and we're going to make it a decimal. Okay? So that's all we do. And you got to rewrite all the other stuff with it. You don't want to lose anything. So that's all we did from here to here. So now we're on this line. The new is equal to 1250 minus 0.2 times 1250. Now it falls on order of operations. And regardless of how you were taught order of operations, I am telling you now, okay, you are going to multiply 0.2 times 1250 before you do any subtracting. That is the word of English and it is gospel. Okay? I know that a lot of people have been taught order of operations and half of them have been taught it incorrectly. Happens. All right? I'm telling you now, you're going to multiply that 0.2 by 0.2 times 
buy that twelve fifty to get two dollars and fifty cents. All right, and then now you can subtract. So it says English. So say we all. All right, twelve fifty minus two fifty. That uh, hat for that Chihuahua is ten dollars. Okay. Order of operations: all multiplying and dividing before you do any adding and subtracting. And along that same line, if it says to divide before multiply, you can do that because you do whichever one you come to first as you move left to right. I know we've had some folks in some other classes argue with, with, with Ms. Wilson about this. And I told her, I was like, you know I know how to do it. So I don't know what they were told. But just, you know, clearing that up. Okay, so that's the discount price formula. New equal to old minus percent of old. You'll see that one quite a bit. All right. Oop, hold on. Uh, shoot. Any questions about this one? Okay. We will, <clears throat> let's keep cracking on here. So again, you can, like I said, you can use this formula to find the original price of an item too after it was discounted. Okay. So, a game is on sale for 30% off of the original price. The sale price is $41.99. Find the original price. So a couple of things. You know how we said on that previous problem that when it said a new hat is this price and it's on sale for this much off, find the, find the discount price and how that $12.50 became the old price at that point? In this case, where it says that the sale price is $41.99, that means that the discount has already been applied. So the $41.99 goes in place of where it says new. Okay? Percent still goes in place of where it said percent. So 30% goes in place of 30, goes in for percent. So now, you're working around this to find the old price. <clears throat> so that pesky, pesky 100% is gonna come back into play here. Remember the 100% that we did with the um, headphones to get the 1.08? All right, it's gonna come back into play. So 41.99 is equal to the old price minus 30% of the old price. Problem is we don't know the old price yet, do we? We know this though that when they took that discount, they took it from 100% of the old price, didn't they? Because it wasn't selling, right? The price they had it at was at the 100% value and it wasn't moving, so they've knocked its value down 30%, okay? So what they did was 100% of the old price minus 30% of the old price. Right now, in this formula, the word old is acting as your variable. That's why it keeps moving along. And because I couldn't think of a variable to use for that other than O, and I don't like using O as a variable, because what does it look like? There you go, all right? So, subtract your percentages. What's 100 minus 30? 70. I'm glad that it didn't take as long to get that answer as it did in the spring. Just people weren't paying attention. I'm sure it had absolutely nothing to do with their capacity. They were just, you know, writing stuff down. So, $41.99 is equal to 70% of the old price. Convert to a decimal. And it looks rough there, but that says $41.99 is equal to 70% of the old price, and then that becomes 0.7 times the old price. So, to find the old price, you are going to divide that 0.7 off. Right? You're going to divide that off. And then the reason why 41.99, when you divide it by 0.7, becomes larger, it goes back to that principle of dividing by a fraction. Remember, keep, change, change. Keep the first one, change divide to a multiply, change the second fraction to its reciprocal, or flip it over. That's why it got bigger. All right, <clears throat> if you're dividing by a decimal less than one, it is going to get bigger just because of the keep change flip thing. But yeah, you can use, and again, this is the, let's do it that way. This is still 
the discount formula. All right. You can use that to find the new price, the old price, or in some instances, if you had to, you can use it to find the percent. Okay. I know that looks like a lot of steps. It is. So when you do these on your work engine, I don't want to see your work go from this to that. If I've got all this, so should you. Okay? Which I think y'all probably be all right as far as that goes. Any questions about <clears throat> this particular problem? Anybody need to grab a picture of it real quick? Again, this is all being recorded. I don't know if I'll get it uploaded today. It might be tomorrow morning before it gets uploaded. Okay? All right. We might have time for to look at one more before I cut you loose. Okay. Yeah, so formula for finding the percent of discount. I thought it was in here somewhere because um, I know myself pretty well, I like to think. All right, so let's say that you're given the sale price and the original price, okay? Let's say that the sale price, and this was, this was kind of like a shortened problem, Let's say it was on sale for $35, it was originally $50, and you need to figure out what the percent of the discount was. So use the percent proportion to find the percent that was paid, okay? If you can find the percent that was paid, you can find the discount, okay? So what you do, you go back to your percent proportion, okay? The sale price is an amount of the original price which means that the original price acts as the base, okay? So the sale price is A, and the original price is B, okay? So 35 over 50, right there, equals P over 100. Well, you're gonna cross multiply and divide. 50P equals 3,500, you divide by 50, so 35 is 70% of 50. That's what that's saying, all right? It says 35 is 70% of 50. Well, if 70% of the price was paid, then, you know, if the original was 100 and the sale was 70, you subtract that and it was a 30% discount. Easy peasy. I told you the percent proportion was the easiest thing you can you, you were going to do in this section. Unfortunately, you can't use it on every single problem. <laughs> I wish you could, but you can't. All right. So that's how you figure out the percent that the discount was, is that you have to find the percent that you actually paid for it, then subtract it from the whole amount. Got it? It'll sink in. This, this lesson is like the... Uh, the perfect metaphor for like the oil funnel effect, you know, dump a bunch of oil in a funnel and it slowly starts to go in. That's what this is. I'm throwing a crap ton of information at you. It's going to slowly start seeping in. Okay. Uh, how are we on time? 156. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Sweet Jesus. Oh, scared me to death. Uh, wasn't expecting that. Yeah, pushed my pushed a blood clot through. Uh, <clears throat> my wife does that to me all the time because she screams really loud before she sneezes, and it just makes all the hair on the back of my neck stand up. She could have been a scream queen. Um, we're gonna save this for what is today Wednesday? Yeah, we're gonna save this for Monday. Uh, this la the lab for this isn't due until Tuesday, so we're gonna save this until Monday because we've still got left markup and some other ratios and rates and things like that, okay? So we actually got pretty far. We got farther than I thought we would. Uh, one, one, one more time, real quick. And this is, you know, this is for the 16-week section. The 14-week folks have a different set of due dates, but I think after this week, everybody should be pretty much on a mind meld here. Um, so, your, or, oh, your conversions test 
closed yesterday for the 16-week folks. For the 14-week folks, the convergence test opened uh, yesterday. So we're trying to get them caught up, you know. And then, so for the 16-week folks, the only thing that you should be working on right now is the uh, Percent Lab 1. It'll be due on September 13th. All right, so Monday is the 12th, right? Uh, no, Monday is the 11th. Good. Okay, yeah. So we'll definitely have more time to talk about it before it's due. All right, any questions about this one? It's a booger. I would suggest <clears throat> that you pull up the Percent Lab 1 uh, worksheet and just kind of glance over it, kind of give yourself an idea of uh, what to expect. Um, it starts you out with some percent proportions. Um, <clears throat> And then uh, we had some issues with some of the uh, questions on this because they were uh, from the wrong section, but I think we got them all sorted out now. So yeah, just re be reading over that. Uh, these down here, we will get to these probably uh, next week some. My goal, for Monday is to, for you guys, is to finish up the notes, cover markup and everything, and then kind of look through some of these and at the very least help you get them set up. And I'm just going to give the answers away, especially on a recorded, last, a recorded class session. But I'll help you get them set up. 159. See you Monday. Where?